Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. There is a high unemployment rate among people with disabilities and traditional employment poses many barriers. So what do you do if you wanna make some money and contribute to something that utilizes your strengths? You start your own business. Diego Mariscal believes that entrepreneurship is a viable option for people with disabilities and is helping disabled entrepreneurs navigate their journey through his program called the Disability Startup Network under his company Together International. We're going to talk with him in this episode, but before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. I'd also like to invite you to my private Facebook group called Crip Chat Club via Zoom, where we meet every Saturday to have real disability community talk. And if you like what you see, I'd like to invite you to support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Diego, thank you for being with us on Chair Chats today. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here. Uh, I am excited to have you here as well because I am a believer in entrepreneurship and I'm so grateful that you're doing something to help disabled entrepreneurs. And I just wanted to help spread the word because I, I, like you, believe entrepreneurship is a viable option for people with disabilities um, and is probably even better than traditional employment, in my opinion, my humble opinion. But yeah. it, you know, so you're doing a program that helps disabled entrepreneurs through their journey. And for you that are, for those of you that are watching right now, I actually am a part of a disability startup network um, yeah. that Diego runs. And I wanted to check it out before I brought him on the show to make sure it was all good. So <laughs> trust me, he is good. Um, he does what he says and what he has to offer is amazing through disability startup network. So um, I would like to give our audience an opportunity to get to know you a bit more, Diego. Um, so if you can just share with us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. You know, you know the song um, Born This Way by Lady Gaga? Yes. I often say that, like, I was born this way. I was born entrepreneurial. And so uh, I was born six months and a half into my mom's pregnancy. Um, she jokes and says that I've always been really stubborn even before I was born because I wanted to get out quickly. Um, and so as a result of that, I was born with CP, uh, cerebral palsy. And I was actually born in the States by accident. Uh, my parents, who are both Mexicans, were shopping. And because I was born prematurely, um, you know, they weren't planning on having me in the States, but surprise, surprise, right? Um, and so growing up with CP in Mexico, it was very, I mean, the very the barriers to for people with disabilities was were very clear, right? Uh, barriers to education, transportation, and especially in my case, my brother, um, who is only ten months and a half younger, who did not have a disability, um, the distinction was very clear, right? He had access to opportunities. Um, that I didn't have access to. And so that really helped, I think, my family as a whole to be able to very tangibly see systematic discrimination at its core. And so based on that, I think my parents, especially my mom, developed sort of a high level expectation, right? If my brother uh, had, uh, access to quality education, they were going to fight to make sure that I had access to quality education. Uh, if my brother could, you know, go play with his friends, then my parents made sure I had those same opportunities. Um, at the same time, the flip side was true, right? If my brother had to get up 
and make his bed in the morning, I had to do that too. And sometimes that meant, you know, accommodating me. Um, so waking up earlier or making sure that I would uh, put away things that didn't break or something like that. Uh, but the expectation was always high, which I really appreciated. And so with that expectation always high and always trying to make sure that I had the same opportunities, um, when I was in high school, I realized that the systematic discrimination was higher. And so I started a student group that was all about educating students about disability. So we would do things like eating without being able to see or using public transportation in a wheelchair or communicating without speaking. And that was my first sort of formal taste in entrepreneurship because by the time we left, I left high school, we were in 15 high schools across the country 80% of it was corporate funded and we were supporting about 3000 students every year, uh, which was pretty incredible. And so, um, so then I moved to the States for college and I realized that uh, some of the same stigmas that I faced in Mexico were also prevalent in the States, which to me was a big surprise because you think the States is like the best place to have a disability, at least as a Mexican, I, I used to think that. Because uh, you have things like the ADA and things like that. But I realized that specifically attitudes were really, uh, were really difficult to break. And on the unemployment un space, um, you know, there's all these progress that has been made around infrastructure, but the attitudinal barriers that disabled people face are still pretty high. And so the more I started to understand about it, about uh, unemployment. And the more I started to get immersed into entrepreneurship, I realized that there were a lot of similarities between the disability experience and the entrepreneurship experience. Uh, from the moment we wake up, we have to figure out how do you get dressed? How do you drive? How do you communicate? And that at scale is essentially entrepreneurship. So what we do um, at Together International and Disability Startup Network being a program of that is how do we support entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs with disabilities um, or people with disabilities who want to be entrepreneurs so they can translate the skills that they already have as disabled people into the workforce. So with the Disability Startup Network, can you share a little bit about what that has to offer? So if anyone's interested in checking it out, they know what to expect. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably my favorite uh, thing because it's really where it all started. So we do meetups, meetups, weekly meetups. We used to do them monthly, but now because of COVID, we do them weekly. And I think we're going to keep keep it that way because there's, there's so much value in them. Um, so it's really, it's a space for disabled entrepreneurs to come together and learn about different topics and meet each other and engage with each other. Um, and uh, so it's a two hour meetup where we usually bring in a guest speaker and for a particular topic, for instance, tomorrow we're talking about grand writing, uh, which is uh, the number one request I get is like, how can we get more funding uh, as disabled entrepreneurs? And so I figure that grand writing, you know, might be a good, good avenue for folks. Um, but more than the guest speaker, oftentimes what happens is um, members get to network with one another. We have one uh, author and then we have uh, one um, illustrator and they started, they met in the, in the network, in the meetups, and now they're collaborating together. And so the illustrator is helping illustrate the book that this author is making. And so little things like that. And you can come for the speaker, which we obviously, you know, encourage people to do. But the, the real value in the experience is for those members that come on a regular basis, because you start to see growth in everybody and everybody sort of lifts each other up. Um, and so it's pretty exciting to see. That's awesome. And I have been to a few already, Disability Startup Networks. They usually meet on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. 
Is that correct? Okay. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So anyone that's interested in joining Disability Startup Network Meetup, where could they find you? So on Meetup, meetup.com, you put in meetup.com, Disability Startup Network, and uh, and it's there. And a new initiative that we actually just launched is we're doing quarterly pitch competitions. So every quarter, we will select five, or actually five entrepreneurs with disabilities will apply. Um, and then we'll get go through a competitive process and then they get selected and they compete for uh, for $1,000. But the beauty of it all is that we do this every quarter, which is insane. So if you, even if people don't make, you know, for one round, they can always apply again and, 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 do, and try again. And what we try to offer is for the people that didn't win $1,000, we try to pair them with a mentor so that they can be better prepared for the next pitch competition. And so we're, we're having our, our pitch competition, uh, our last one for this year, December 3rd. But I think what we're gonna do, you're getting kind of a sneak, pre, sneak preview here, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna offer the pitch competitions for members that come on a regular basis to Disability Startup Network. So like if you've come to three meetings or more, you're eligible to pitch at our next um, pitch competition. So what we're trying to do as a whole is create a system of support for disabled entrepreneurs so that no matter what state you're in, you can access some level of support. And I feel like it's a great safe space in which people can practice their pitching, whether they win or not, because exactly. as entrepreneurs, you're having to pitch yourself or your business to investors or other um, podcasters or other people who have media shows that you can get on, you know, it's so pitching is a part of entrepreneurship in one way or another, even if you're pitching your customers, it's all mm -hmm. pitching. And so um, it's a great space for people to um, explore that piece, but also get better and better as they move forward in it. So, and it's safe, right? You're with okay. people who are there, who can, um, who are, are there for you. They're not just there to criticize you. Exactly. And even the, even the, you know, we have judges at the pitch competition and we ask them to give like very specific detailed feedback. So even, you know, whatever happens, you'll still get uh, a written report of, look, this is the areas that we thought you did great. This is the areas that you can improve. Um, and like you said, it's, it's a safe space. It's, what we want is we're using sort of a pitch competition or, or those type of mediums, but it's really a mechanism to support disability, disabled entrepreneurs as a collective. Um, so it's really, like you said, a safe space for people to receive support um, at various stages of their business, which is, which is pretty exciting. So I wanna move this conversation to a little bit more generalized um, because there may be someone watching this who is an entrepreneur or is even thinking about dabbling in entrepreneurship. Although I don't think you can dabble, you're either in or you're out. It's <laughs> There's very little space to dabble um, because otherwise it's a hobby, it's not a business. Uh, and so there is a level of commitment that has to be there. But in your experience working with other entrepreneurs, what have you observed to be a couple of the biggest challenges or obstacles that newbie entrepreneurs face? Especially in the last few years, entrepreneurship has become so glamorized. Like everybody wants to be an entrepreneur and there's all these programs and things and like schools are doing programs that are entrepreneurship. And the reality is it's like, it is really, 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 really difficult. Um, and that's not to say that it isn't amazing and because you're basically, you're creating something out of nothing. You're, 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 you know, something that didn't exist before, people are now paying you for, which is amazing, right? Like every time I think about it, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, they're giving like, in the purest sense of the word, they're giving, they're showing, 
that they value your thoughts, your ideas, your creation by giving you their money. Like, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing. And at the same time, it takes a lot of work, a lot of discipline. A lot. It's, it's almost like an art form, I would say. And so I think people need to be really uh, aware that it isn't going to be overnight success. Um, it's going to take time. It's going to take, uh, and some people try, you know, and never make it. And the, and I think my, my advice would be enjoy the process, not necessarily the destination, because otherwise you're going to be really frustrated. Patience is the name of the game. And I know that is such a virtue that's so hard to practice but it's something that's necessary for entrepreneurship. I know for my own entrepreneurial journey, I launched One Leg Up Productions in August of 2018. And probably only this year did it really start picking up pace um, mm -hmm. thanks to COVID. So there is a silver lining uh -huh. to COVID, <laughs> right? So, um, and but I think what you said in the beginning, people with disabilities are used to, operating in environments that don't fit them and are are a little bit harder to navigate and i would say yes there is a parallel to entrepreneurship because there never is a good time to start like people are always like well is this a really good time to start a business because of covid and the economy and blah 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 well in actuality this is the best time to start a business most more millionaires are created during economic downturns than any time in history. So if you are thinking about in, you know, going through the entrepreneurship journey and embarking on that, then I would highly encourage you to do so. Um, and, you know, just in doing my own research, I like, it was really shocking to me that 80% of our economy is carried by small businesses. Um, and so it's, you're needed, right? Like, you you and your ideas are needed but to make those come to fruition it takes a like i said earlier it takes a level of commitment and patience and mm -hmm. and knowing it's not the get rich quick thing yeah. <laughs> scheme that everyone wishes i mean don't we all wish i'm just gonna wake up tomorrow a millionaire right. 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 right but um you know that's something um i you know you've been in the entrepreneurial game for a while too yourself so I'm curious, was there a specific book or teacher that really influenced you? I love this question. Um, so it's going to sound, you know, sort of counterintuitive or maybe like a little bit dramatic, but the, the really big shift for me was actually going to therapy and like talking to a therapist because for the longest time, and this is why I started with the Lady Gaga quote, right? Like born this way. Because for the longest time, I was like, why can't I just be happy at a regular nine to five? Like, why can't I just, you know, go get a job and just, you know, just be happy? Uh, I used to work for um, the Inter-American Development Bank. And then I worked for a, a not-for-profit agency and, and um, you know, I would always think like, oh, this is, you know, what we're doing is great, blah, blah, but what if we did it this way? Or what if we changed it that way? Or what if we, you know, added this thing? Like always trying to sort of change things or disrupt things. Um, the, the, the feedback that I would always get in school is like, Diego, you're always trying to push the envelope. Uh, and, and, the, and the professors would say that as if it were negative, but I'm like, no, no, why? <laughs> Uh, so I never really fit the bucket. Uh, and so for me, a really big uh, aha moment was, was in therapy. I got to really explore a lot about myself and learn about, you know, what, what motivates me and what, what makes me excited. And I really um, came to accept that I am an entrepreneur and I've always been an entrepreneur. And and it, 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 it's sort of in my nature. Um, I think the best way to explain it also is, for me at least, entrepreneurship, and it may be different for different people, but for me at least, entrepreneurship 
you're skydiving and you're assembling the parachute as you're falling. Um, and I love that. That to me is like amazing. <laughs> Um, but it's not for everybody. Not everybody is going to like that, you know, risk, uh, level of risk, uncertainty. Um, pe some people need structure and they need a steady paycheck. Don't feel bad either way. And even if you pursue entrepreneurship and then in the middle of it realize, oh my God, this isn't for me. I don't want to do this. That is totally 100% okay, you're going to learn so much by just starting a business that that's going to make you a much more um, competitive employee than if you hadn't started a business. So by all means, if you're curious about it, start. And if you decide that's not for you, that's totally fine. Um, you're going to learn so much in the process anyway. Yes. And I'd like to interject oftentimes because I've done it in my own life. I start it and then I freak out, whether it be fear of failure or fear of success or something. And then I stop and I'm like, it's not for me. It's not for me. But then I keep coming back to it. It's like an idea that won't let me quit. And so you're going to come up against the resistance. You're going to come up against the fears yeah. that tell you it's, you're not made for it. But, um, and for some people that's true. Right. And, and I'd like to ask you a follow-up question to that, which is what are three qualities you think are important for all entrepreneurs to have? Yeah. Good, good question. So I think the number one, and, and if you haven't watched the TED talk, I highly encourage you to watch it. It's called um, gr grit. Oh, I, no, I don't think the TED talk is actually called that, but it's Angela Duckworth. And she talks about uh, grit and the power of grit. Um, so that's number one. And grit is really passion and perse perseverance. Um, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, uh, you're, you're wasting your time, right? Um, so, so grit, I would say, number one. The second thing, and it kind of goes, uh, it's complementary to grit, especially from a passion perspective, is to be very curious um, and to ask lots of questions. And I say this because... Um, people say like, what, what are you passionate about? And sometimes that can feel like a very overwhelming question because sometimes you're like, I don't know, like there's so many things I like. So if you, if you flip it and you say, what are you curious about? What would you want to learn more about? Most likely you're going to, you're going to arrive to something that you're really passionate about by following your curiosity. And so, uh, so that's a second one. And also I would say that when you're pursuing entrepreneurship, being really curious about like, okay, this is the way that it's always been done, but why? Like, what if we do it this way? Or what if we do it that way? Uh, I think that has served me really well of like always questioning why, why, why is this the way that it is? Who said that it had to be that way? So grit, um, um, curiosity. And then the third one, which, which might sound counterintuitive, I think, but it, at least for me, I find it really, really critical is self-care um, and sort of an ability to, to be self-aware and self-regulated because entrepreneurship can be a, lo a lonely experience and can be a very intense experience and so you've got to be able to and the best uh, entrepreneurs I know do this extremely well you've got to be able to self set boundaries you've got to be able to set self-care routines and by that I don't mean like go to a, a trip in Paris like self-care no like you know, what are things that you could do on a, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis that help you stay sane? Is that meditating, you know, every day? Is that journaling? Is that taking a bath, you know, long bubble bath? Whatever flows your boat, 
but uh, but on a regular basis to make sure that you're not burning out. I would say those are the three three things that for me are really critical in any uh, entrepreneur. Those are great. I love it. Grit, curiosity, and self care and awareness of yourself. Yes, love it. Um, okay, I think this is a good start for anybody that is curious about entrepreneurship. Like you said, Diego, it isn't for everybody because you have to be in it for the long game. And um, I would add to your list as an entrepreneur myself, I'd add commitment to that. Um, and commitment means not doing what always feels good, you know, and, and sometimes having to work anyway, like Sunday nights, oftentimes I like as much as I just want to veg out in front of Netflix, I really, it's almost like I can't help myself, but work. Um, right, right. And so, yeah, that's why the passion part is so important. And I love that, that part of it. Um, thank you so much for being on chair chats, for sharing uh, your thoughts on entrepreneurship, giving us some advice, but also doing um, following through on your, on your clues and, you know, you follow the signals in, in who you are and realize, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. So when you can come to accepting who you really are, and that's part of the self-awareness you talked about, amazing things get created. And I, you know, what I love about entrepreneurship is that it is a pathway and an entree point into freedom, fulfillment, and fun. And those are the three values that I live by. And I feel like that's all we want as human beings, right? We want to have freedom of choice. We want to have that feeling like we're contributing something and that we have meaning and purpose in our life. And we want to have some fun in our life, right? Like let's have fun on the way. And all that is available through entrepreneurship. So you, the viewer, I'm talking to you. If you are interested in exploring entrepreneurship, I would highly encourage you to check out the Disability Startup Network through Diego's company, Together International. He um, Go on Meetup, do a search for Disability Startup Network. Um, also, um, he's on Facebook. Let's do those things. Go to Meetup, go to Facebook, and um, we'll get you plugged in. And you can be surrounded by a group of people that want to see you succeed um, and are there to support you if you're ready to say, you know, the entrepreneurship is not my thing. And when Diego and I were talking before this interview, he said something so beautiful. He said, every great athlete is there's a great coach that has pushed them and encouraged them and helped them stretch. And the Disability Startup Network is a place where you can get all of those things, right? You can get the coaching, you can get ideas, you can get the support. So go there um, and join us. I'll be there too. So what, what fun we'll have. Diego, thank- <laughs> <laughs> Diego, thanks so much for joining us. So blessed to have you here. So grateful to have the Disability Startup Network. And thank you to the viewer for tuning in. I'd like to remind you to please subscribe and share if you haven't done so already. Perhaps this is a interview that you feel like will help some of your friends or family. Please share it with them. I'd also like to invite you to my private Facebook group called Crip Chat Club via Zoom, where we meet every Saturday via Zoom to have real disability community talk. And if you like what you see, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. Thanks so much for joining us. And until we meet again, be blessed.